So, who would like to see me do a bad impression of Stuart Ashen? Of course, that's not the intention, but I have to review a thing. There is a thing there in front of the camera, and it becomes painfully apparent to me that the best way to do this, at least for the purpose of the YouTubes, is kind of the way that Ashen does it, which is thing in front of the camera, hands looming in and out of view, that sort of thing. So, uh, Stuart, if you're watching, which is very unlikely, I really am not ripping you off. Look, no sofa or nothing, uh, but here we go. So the object in front of you is a Revo K101. It is a clone console, which uh, I will explain in a moment. But first, a little bit of history. So way back when in the early 2000s, Nintendo released a successor to the original Game Boy. This was the Game Boy Advance. Now this one's a little bit beat up, um, but I have had it since it's released. It doesn't actually work anymore, sadly. I haven't got around to cleaning it up and fixing it. Um, but this is the original Game Boy Advance, so it was released in this horrible sort of transparent purpley colour, which I've never really liked. There are a few other colours released, but uh, this was the most common if you look online. And on eBay, this is the most common. Um, so there's your standard D-pad. You've got two buttons. You've got an L button and an R button. Uh, and you've got start and select. And, you know, it's a Nintendo console. There's the battery compartment there. Uh, and it's got a, you know, a pretty nice screen. I mean, it's slightly larger than that of the original Game Boy. And, of course, it's in full color and not the sort of... I think it was 256 colors that the Game Boy Color was in. And of course, it was a 16 bit console. So, whilst the original Game Boy could be sort of compared to a portable NES, although it was actually a bit more underpowered than that, uh, this could be compared to a portable SNES. However, the screen, which was one of its biggest features, of course, was also one of its biggest drawbacks because, like the original Game Boy in the Game Boy Color, it had no light. So you had to play in direct sunlight or under a spot lamp or something like that and angle the screen and it was a bit of a headache. So when, a couple of years later, they released the Game Boy Advance SP, uh, and this is a lovely NES print one that my friend Talia gave to me because she is brilliant in things. Uh, so it had a clamshell design, as you can see, the same buttons and everything. Uh, again, this one looks like an NES pad. Uh, which isn't standard. This is an applique. Um, but it did have a light, but it was a front light, not a backlight, because backlights are more expensive. So it was a lot better than the original. And I remember gleefully darting for one of these when they were first released. Um, but there were still some issues playing with it in sort of normal daylight, like playing it at home in the evening with the curtains drawn. Absolutely spot on, sort of normal living room ambience absolutely fine get outside which arguably you know a portable console a handheld console is designed to do and you found yourself with problems once again to combat that you wanted a backlit screen now there was a backlit version of the game boy advance sp released right towards the end of its life it was model number uh 101 ags 101 as opposed to the ags 001 which is what these are they're also very highly sought after because they had a backlight and because there were relatively few of them. Um, what's also seems to have happened on eBay these days is people are cannibalizing slightly faulty or slightly dodgy or even fully working SP101 units and they are taking the screen out and putting them into standard Game Boy Advance SPs. So, for example, if you had an, uh, one of the limited edition ones like this but weren't happy with the screen, a lot of people are buying those and um, using them to customize their slightly more valuable Game Boy Advance SPs, which is really sad because it means the if you wanted an SP-101, which until recently was pretty much the best way of playing Game Boy Advance SP games, you're looking at paying through the nose for it because those intact units, especially boxed ones, are like hen's teeth and you could be paying sort of 80 to 100 quid for one in good condition. Shortly after, or around the same time, in fact, as the uh, SP-101, you had the Game Boy Micro. And I, ooh, bong. And I have one here. So this one was considered by a lot of people, I guess, to be more a novelty than anything else. And this one had, as you see, it's a small console. Sort of, there's my hand there, to give you an idea of the size. In fact, there's a Game Boy Advance cartridge, to give you an idea of the size. 
So, um, and this had a slightly smaller version of the uh, of the screen. I'm forgetting my words for a second. Use your words, Matt. Of the beautiful backlit screen that was available in the AGS 101. So, for a lot of people, this is a great way of playing those old Game Boy Advance cartridges because the Game Boy Advance had a great library. However, now we have another option, and this brings us to the Revo K101. So this is a hardware clone, which are relatively common in the sort of retro games market. So every so often, somebody will come along with a new console that will play old games. However, a lot of the time, this is done by emulation. For example, the Retron 5, which, yes, I know I still haven't given you a review for. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um... But occasionally you get hardware clones. Uh, NES, clone NESs are very, very common. Now, Nintendo doesn't clamp down on these because they very rarely use any of their proprietary hardware. It's it's just modern hardware that will access their games and play their games. And for the most part, they don't really care what people are doing with old cartridges. Apparently, unless you're filming footage from them and putting that on YouTube, and then they'll take all your money or something... So, uh, yeah, hardware clones, fairly common. Um, and actually, there have been Game Boy Advance clones before now. In fact, there was a model before this one, the name of which I think was just the K1 uh, that existed. This one is fairly new. The first shipment has gone out. I ordered mine way back in March, and it finally arrived a couple of days ago. So, I'm taking you through. So, let's have a look. I mean, this is the box. I'm not going to do the actions thing of reading the sort of the, the the details on the back, but there's the thing there. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get... Oops. Stop punching the microphone, Matt. You get the console itself. I'll just pop that there. You get... A power adapter now uh, it charges through a USB cable it's actually a standard mini USB cable not I note micro which seems to be par for the course these days but mini maybe that was cheaper for them to put in I don't know the people that made this so Revo or whatever they're going by these days are uh, they've actually pulled out all of the stops to kind of keep the costs low to make this a very affordable unit, which we'll get to. We'll get to the pricing in a minute. But um, so you'll get this now. As you can see, this is your standard sort of two prong US adapter. So when you order one, if at the end of this review you're inclined to do so, you do need to specify that you will require a European adapter, which they kindly threw in. Oops. There's Matt not being able to grip things. What they also give you is a standard AV cable, which if you've got a camcorder, you'll be very familiar with. Why do they give you that? Well, if you put two and two together, it's because this unit will output to a television via component video, but we'll get to that. There's the USB cable. Don't need to linger on that. Dingle dangle, dingle dangle. I want a deep fried turkey. Okay, it's a wrist strap. Uh, they do give you headphones, which is actually kind of cool. I'm sure they're better than the shitty plastic white ones that you get with uh, Apple devices these days. And last but not least, well, actually, it's not last, but uh, spoilers, darling. You get a little slip case for it, which might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's free and it'll keep your unit scratch free well actually no there is something else in the box which i forgot to get out but they also give you screen protectors which is really cool there's uh, three of them i think and that's absolutely awesome so actually for what you pay for it which is about 60 dollars or about 38 pounds they actually put a hell of a lot in the box but it's these last two items that will be of most interest to people the first item is the k card the second item is this uh, fairly bog standard, probably costs a pound, but micro SD card reader, which is USB. 
And the reason you need this is because the K card has a micro SD slot. And the reason the mic, uh, the K card has a micro SD slot. So you almost made that really, really smooth and clever there. And then I just sort of stumbled over my words. Use your words, Matt. Um, the reason the K card has a micro SD card slot is so you can load ROMs. Yes, the emulators delight ROM files. And I'm sure that everybody watching this only ever uses ROM files for which they earn, they earn, they own the original cartridge or that they've dumped themselves. I'm sure nobody goes to certain websites that may be a paradise for uh, emulators and uh, download them. No, no, sir. I'm sure they don't. So, the Revo K101 will play ROM files. However, it is not an emulation machine. As mentioned before, it is a hardware clone. So what does that mean? It means that it plays the original games from cartridge. Now, unlike emulation based machines like again the retron 5 it does not do this by dumping the rom to internal memory and sort of reading like that it reads them directly from the cartridge it saves the save games directly to the cartridge it is for all intents and purposes a game boy advance so let's have a look at the unit itself so d-pad start select buttons and four face buttons which is quite interesting uh, and we'll get to those in a moment as well. I keep deferring things, but you'll understand now. Uh, yeah, the autofocus is probably going to go haywire. Ashen Dust is problem all the time. See, see, I'm doing pretty much all right for my first ever review. So, and yes, LNR buttons. So, look at the interesting things on the top. Let's get that a little bit closer. So, the interesting things on the top. Oh, come on. There we go. So, there's your charging slot. Uh, your charging socket, rather. Port is the word I was looking for there. There is a brightness button, which, yes, does actually adjust the brightness of the console, but in combination with other buttons, it also acts as a hotkey. The hotkey will do a bunch of functions. Again, I'll get to in a minute. Uh, there's your AV out port. And there is a Game Boy Advance expansion port. Now, this is most interesting because it means that you can plug in Game Boy Advance accessories, including link cables and uh, those cables that link it up to a, uh, a GameCube. Now, the one thing it won't take, and I'll show you why, is it will not take the wireless adapters that, uh, funnily enough, came with uh, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. I'm sure they would work if they actually could be plugged in, but here is one of said adapters here. Uh, is that the right way around? Yes, that is the right way around. This is one of said adapters here. Uh, and as you can see from the bottom, there are clips, which on the original Game Boy Advance console, so little one here, you see there are two lug holes there. So and there you go, and that clips in there and holds it steady so that uh, it doesn't drop off when you're using it sort of mid connection. So because of that, oh, I keep being in that microphone. It's a bit too close to my. Uh, to my hands there. So because of that, you can see the uh, the Revo K101 does not have the lug holes, so you can't, I'm afraid, and you can't really even bodge it. If somebody comes up with a little, I don't know, a little short adapter cable, maybe, you know, something that would just give it, a, maybe, but um, it really, I think that's asking a little bit too much, so hopefully that's not a deal breaker for anybody. Uh, you've got a little speaker there. There's the cartridge slot there, as you've already seen. And um, if I flip the thing upside down, that's the battery compartment there because it's got a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. There's the power switch. And there's the and there's the volume scroller. So that's the unit itself. So how about we switch it on? And I can show you the arguably the K101's best feature, which is its screen. And that's the reason that I bought one. Uh, genuinely, the ROM thing is just a bonus. So I'm going to turn the sound off here because uh, Nintendo have a habit of content IDing things and it's got Pokemon in there. So uh, this is the Pokemon Leaf Green cartridge that my friend Talia gave me with uh, the aforementioned Game Boy. So, so this is... 
Pokemon Leaf Green and the auto contrast is probably going absolutely insane right now. Uh, but there we are. And that's playing from original cartridge. And yeah, there's Talia's save file there. So, you can see that if it's got a Game Boy Advance cartridge in it, it boots up just like a standard Game Boy Advance, including the same splash screen. So let's just move some stuff here. So, should we have a look and compare the screens? So, if I pop the Revo there. So there's the Revo running Pokemon Leaf Green. Okay. In fact, ah, actually, to show you this, because I only have two copies of the physical cartridge, let's first show you the K card. So, if we pop that in, so you get a different splash screen if you boot it up with the K card in. I will say one of the small downsides to this is that you always have to hold the power button down for longer than you think you'd have to. So I get a moment of minor panic every time I switch it on. I'm like, oh no, it's broken. So we get down to Pokemon Leaf Green. Uh, and I might add, these are games that I own and I'm using ROM files for convenience. What other people do, of course, is not my concern. Okay, so there's Leaf Green loading up there on the K101. So you've got a fairly good view of the screen there. Okay, so here is the same game running on the Game Boy Advance SP with the front light. If I just hit that to go to the title screen. So uh, you can probably barely see it there on the... Uh, oh, it's looking a bit better now. But So there's a difference. That's running the same title screen. And then just for comparison, we're just going to... I don't know if I can... Oh, that'll work. So that's... Uh, I'll have to angle that because... So that's the same thing running. Oh, maybe that's you can see all three at the same time. So that's the same thing running on the Game Boy Micro. So as you can see, uh, the difference between the Revo K101 and the Game Boy Micro is actually fairly, oops, fairly minimal. Angle that. They look fairly the same. Uh, there is a slight aspect ratio difference actually, but after a while you don't notice to be pretty honest. And you can change that actually. If I uh, should pop that there for a minute. If you hold the brightness switch and press down, it will change that back to original aspect ratio like so. But actually I prefer having it full screen and which is weird because on movies and things on DVD and whatnot. Um, yeah, native resolutions there. On, uh, yeah, on DVDs and things, when they're stretched or things aren't the right aspect ratio, it drives me absolutely insane. But you don't really notice on the K101. So, yeah, pretty gorgeous screen. Sound reproduction, which I am not going to be able to demo for you because of the Nintendo Content ID music more than they do anything else. So, I'll just switch these off. So, that's the Revo K101. Um, all things considered, it's a really nice unit. And I'll be brutally honest, this has just become my favourite handheld. Now, I'm a huge fan of Nintendo handhelds, and I have pretty much every one they've ever done. I'm still missing an original Game Boy from my collection, because mine broke when I was a kid, and that got replaced with a Game Boy Pocket. So, so yes, I am a real fan. You know, it's not my fault I don't have it. Well, it is my fault I don't have it. I dropped it down the toilet when I was like 10 because I'm an idiot but um, yeah let's load up Mortal Kombat there that's not a Nintendo game and I can I can probably show you the speakers so the sound reproduction is pretty good I'll shush a minute uh, when I say that the sound production is pretty good I mean the sound reproduction through headphones is spot on because this is a hardware clone so it plays the heart uh, it plays the uh 
the sound the way the Game Boy Advance plays sound, so that's absolutely fine. Ha, oh, would you look at that? Oh. Also Combat Advance. I wonder if I could still do any of Scorpion's moves. I think... You yeah, alright? You bongs? Oh, well, someone's getting their butt kicked. Yeah, I'm not very good at this, you may have noticed. This is probably a poor example of a game, but there we go. It's... No, you get over here. So, yeah, hopefully that's a good demo of the screen, actually, because um, it's fairly pretty. But yes, um... This has become my new favourite handheld because there's a massive library of Game Boys Advance games which, by today's standards, I mean, we've been really spoiled with the likes of the uh, PlayStation Vita and even the PSP. So, and well, and the 3DS. I mean, the 3DS has two gorgeous screens and the uh, the DS XLs and the 3DS XLs, of course, have all got amazing screens. Um, but there's this wonderful library of Game Boy Advance titles out there which... Trying to play them on the original hardware, it becomes apparent just how mm, inconvenient is probably the wrong word, but how more convenient it could have been. You know, the, the consoles could have been. And the fact that the hardware went through that many iterations is a key indicator of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick jump cut and I'm going to show you, or I'm going to attempt to show you, hopefully I'll get it working, um, the output to television so you can actually see the thing running on uh, the TV that I've got behind here uh, and then we'll jump back and carry on wrapping up the review okay so uh, this is my my little telly here there's the Revo there just to prove I'm not cheating and this is Mortal Kombat as you can see the output to be honest for composite is pretty good there is a slight hum, which you're probably not picking up on the mic, but there is a slight hum to the uh, to the output. But let's uh, Scorpion. Oh crikey, no! Matt is a novice. So I'm actually playing using the Revo pad, obviously. I have to keep remembering that there's only uh, only two of these four buttons actually work because it's a Game Boy Advance. Is there a block? Oh, there is a block. Okay. But anyway, yeah, so I'll just sort of die for you. But yes, um, it seems to run okay. There you go. Okay, so we're back here again and I'm sure it all worked fine and it all looked lovely. Um, so why would you buy one of the? I keep, I mean, like I'm, I'm better, than, I'm a better broadcaster than this, right? Why would you buy one of these instead of going on eBay and getting a Game Boy Advance, which is fairly easy to do? I mean, the the standard AGS double zero one you can get between sort of fifteen quid and twenty quid, you know, very reasonably priced. So why would you buy a non official piece of hardware, a clone piece of hardware? Well, for a start. The screen is a lot better, as you've already seen. Secondly, the battery life is, to my recollection, better than the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I haven't played on a, a Game Boy Advance unit for quite some time. I've been using my old DS as a, as a Game Boy Advance emulator because, again, the screen screen there was better than my AGS Double Zero One. So, um, but as far as I recall, the Game Boy Advance you got a, uh, five to seven hours of battery life. It is roughly the same on the Revo K101. Um, it charges very quickly as well. Uh, the ROM thing is a is a great little addition. It means that um, you know legal concerns aside, you can load up a soft copy of your collection up on a memory card and then just port the thing with you without having to worry about tracking multiple cartridges. You know, it's uh, it's effectively the iPod for Game Boy Advance games, uh, and I'm perfectly down with that it's the same reason i've got my kindle it's the same reason that i've got uh, an mp3 player 
you know you like having your in collection these days again it's it's something that maybe we feel entitled to these days but you get your entire collection in one place and that of course is the main thing again it works with all of the game boy advance accessories so you, there's nothing losing out again that's the advantage of uh, a clone system over say an emulation system it's portable it's lightweight it's sturdy and it just plays the games absolutely perfectly now, when you're playing games from ROM, there are some additional options. You can uh, save states, although I have heard from other reviews that this can be hit and miss, and sometimes you have to reset the console before it remembers where it put the the save state file. So, um, But you can also sort of play about with, um, with the save games. Again, from ROM files, you can actually sort of back those up. There's a real-time clock feature. So if you've got games like, say, Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire, again, if you've got the original cartridge with you, that's not an issue because they have a battery. But maybe that battery's died. So the real-time clock feature, which is set from the options menu, it is off by default, but you can switch it on fairly easily. That will actually take over because, of course, the way that the original cartridges sort of track this was they had a little battery on the motherboard and you set the time when you first started playing the game and that little battery kept the clock ticking over and then it would know how much time has passed whether it's morning or evening or whatever if the battery's died you can't do that yes you can desolder the battery and resolder a new battery on which i have been able to do with some of my other games but i wouldn't say it's it's in terms of soldering projects it's one of the easiest ones you can do but it is a little fiddly and if you're not confident doing that this is a great solution also, it's a brand new piece of hardware, and with that comes a manufacturer's warranty and the sort of peace of mind that if it goes wrong, you can buy another one or get it repaired. And, you know, the price is really reasonable. For £38, you're getting a brand new unit with a lot of stuff thrown in. The um, the memory card, it's a 4 gigabyte by standard. I actually got mine upgraded for free to an 8 gigabyte because of the delay in shipping, which was really kind of the Revo people. They did preload it with ROMs, which gave me a sinking feeling when they emailed me to tell me they'd done this. But when I actually saw what they were, they weren't copyrighted ROMs. They were actually, in fact, uh, homebrew. And actually hilarious homebrew, which I will get to for 15 minutes of pain or something like that, or maybe I'll review them separately because... Um, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but actually some of these are absolutely hilarious and actually possibly copyright infringing in their own way kind of thing. But yeah, we'll, we'll get to those. But yeah, it's a really good piece of kit. It's a really good piece of kit and I'm really pleased with it. And, um, it's really made, you know, I've been playing through the Pokemon series. You know, I got my, as I mentioned on the One More Go podcast, I've had my renaissance with those just recently and I've played the, um, all four of the, 3ds titles so it's nice now to be able to go back all the way to fire red and actually have a reliable piece of hardware to actually play those through on so that's the revo k101 um it does have four buttons on the front and something i haven't tried because it didn't occur to me until just now was will it play snares roms i don't know i don't know maybe it's just got four buttons in case of future expansion or something like that but uh it's, uh, I, I don't know whether it plays Game Boy Advance. I don't think it would play SNES ROMs. I don't see how it could play SNES ROMs if it's a Game Boy Advance hardware claim, but we'll find out. I'll, I'll drop one on the memory card and I'm, I'll add it at the end of this review if it does. But otherwise, yeah, that's the unit. Hopefully I've answered your questions. Um, you know, let me know. If you get one yourself, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, and yeah, that, there we go. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to end this. It's not a let's play. I've not really done one of these before. There you go. Mm, Revocate 101. Tell your friends. Okay, this is ridiculously exciting. So as an experiment, I dumped a bunch of ROMs on this. Here are the original Game Boy Advance ROMs that I had on the unit. Um, what made me start thinking this, apart from the fact that there are four face buttons there, where the Game Boy Advance only has two, um, was that there was a little Game Boy Advance icon next to these ROM files as the standard icon. I thought, well, okay, so it's a Game Boy Advance clone, but this is a Game Boy ROM. This is the original Pokemon Blue, which I'm just going to turn the sound off on. But here's the thing. I tried running original Game Boy cartridges on the thing, and it won't read them from cartridge. But 
it will read them from ROM. And actually behaves in much the same way as the Game Boy Advance does. So it picks up all of the um, programmed in information for the Super Game Boy. So there's the original Pokemon Blue running. Now let's just reset that and return to file list. So I dumped a bunch of other rudge on there. Mega Drive, it doesn't recognize the ROM files. SNES, uh, it doesn't recognize the ROM files. That's a NES file that got in there by mistake. But NES... It does run NES games. This one we can have the sound on for. And this is another non-Nintendo first party. I think we all remember this spectacular piece of shit. Now, what I found is... So, it runs absolutely fine. Which is just... Which is just amazing. Um, so this is not an advertised feature. And this must be emulation. Now, I will stress, it is a hardware clone. It runs the uh, Game Boy Advance games the way a Game Boy Advance does. It's not emulation. But for these other consoles, it must be. And this must be built into the um, the K card. Go away, foot soldier. Oh, go away. Nobody loves you. I shouldn't actually be playing this, but yes, there you go. So, sorry, that was a bit off-centre. There you go, that's... Um, and you see that there's a slight issue with the text rendering there on the NES ROMs, which isn't present. Uh, and also, at the... What's that upside down? I don't know what that is there. How weird. There we are. Uh, but yeah, there you are. That's uh, that's the K101. Oops. There goes the fuzzies. Yeah, shut up, Splinter. Nobody cares. So yeah, that's the uh, yeah, that's the K101. That's really cool. That's an unexpected feature, and it's not an advertised feature as well, which is really sneaky. So um, I don't know. Ooh. Uh, let's just zoom that uh, back out so you can see what's going on. Come on, focus, focus, focus on the hat, focus on the hat. There we go, well done. Um, yeah, so I don't know whether there is um, there are any other formats it handles. Again, unadvertised feature, no way of knowing. And none of the other reviews seem to pick up on this. So I don't know whether I'm the first person to work this out or whether I've just not seen the reviews that have, but... Um, I can't be the first, but I mean, there aren't too many of these in circulation at the moment. But yes, it will play other formats. How awesome is that?